Hi right, guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, today we're going to be taking a, uh, well, yeah, taking a look at the state of the GTX 1080 Ti palette uh, Game Rock card again, because I've uh, finished up some more modifications, and so I figured I'd uh, demonstrate kind of uh, how, how well those are working. So let me just put the, so I have vCore control. Um, like I have vCore, uh, so I have vCore settings and I have switching frequency uh, controls working. I don't have any vDroop control, I don't have any memory voltage control, and I don't have any PEX rail, uh, PEX rail voltage control, but I'll, I'll be doing those mods later. I just wanted to sort of show uh, the, the card in its current state because this works and I'm, I'm super pleased with it, so I figured I'd share it. Um, so anyway, here we are on the X299 OC formula, 7740X CPU, of course. Um, why am I using it? Just because I'm using it. Like, it, it just happened to be the system set up here. So, um, yeah, right now it is configured. So basically the modifications that I have is uh, the card is now, now instead of running 600 kilohertz switching frequency on the voltage controller, it runs 700 kilohertz. So that's 100 kilohertz all the, t like extra 100 kilohertz all the time. Um, and then for, uh, for the higher settings, I have one megahertz and I have 1.35 megahertz as well as available settings on the GPU. So we will, we will be going up to those. Um, I have the, the multimeter plugged in so I can show you that the, the voltage controls work, even though I feel that's kind of unnecessary because let's be honest, I, I've been doing core, like I've been getting core voltage control for, for ages. So it's like... That's kind of a, that's not a new modification for me by any means, but I, I'd figure I, I'd show that it does indeed work. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's just fire it up. And of course, uh, this right here, ugh, that's the oscilloscope. So that's going to show us the, the switching frequency on the VRM. Uh, here's the probe. It's not currently actually hooked up to anything. I'm just going to stab the uh, 12 volt side of the inductor right here. And that's one of the vCore VRM inductors, and that'll that'll show us the switching frequency. So let's fire this thing up, and uh, I'm gonna show the monitor here to prove that the car does indeed work. So there, um, it, it doesn't does indeed work. And why are we not getting a core voltage reading? <laughs> it's not hooked up, is it? Hmm. Are you kidding me? Why isn't that measuring anything? You've got to be joking, right? Oh no, it just did measure something. There! There, it's just not making contact. I, I didn't, I should have screwed those terminals down, but whatever. Okay, so right now we're at uh, 0.82 uh, volts, and if I want to tweak it up, which, this is why I don't like, so we don't need to see the monitor anymore because the card obviously does boot. And uh, so this is why I don't like having trimmers attached to GPUs. Because it makes it a freaking pain to adjust them. But you can clearly see I can change the voltage up and down. Um, the limits on this are set to, I think, 0.7 volts and, well, around 0.7 volts, because obviously the limit resistors aren't, like, they're, are, they aren't precision. They're just the nearest value that I could kind of get. Um, and uh, the maximum voltage should be about 1.7 volts. I also have this handy switch, which is for basically booting up on LN2, which immediately drops our voltage all the way down. Um, and the, the actual drop uh, increases as we, uh, as, as we go up in voltage because I can still raise the voltage while we're in this like low voltage mode. As you can clearly see, right? We, we can still raise the voltage, but uh, we're now at like a lower voltage setting. And so the reason why I have this is basically uh, when you run a 1080 Ti on liquid nitrogen, what I found out is basically the cards don't boot when you have them at like 1.5 volts. 
but they do scale to 1.5 volts when you're like running 3D Mark. That's the like on the other card I have. The only way you're getting that thing to run 2400 megahertz plus is at like 1.55 volts V core. The thing is, if you crash and the whole system goes down, well, you're going to try to boot at 1.55 volts, and that's not going to work. So I have a switch on that card which allows me to do exactly what this switch right here does which is just drop the voltage. Now, originally that switch was supposed to just like completely disable the mod, but because of me being an idiot and just like not realizing how I wired it up, it just drops the voltage. But that turned out to be so useful that I decided, well, I'm just gonna run it the same way here. And there, there's the voltage back up now. So we're back at uh, 0.87 volts. Um, and as you can clearly see, uh, and we'll just take the scope measurement right now. Heatsink is still just kind of warming up, so let's take the scope measurement. And there's our 350 kilohertz, right? And uh, hopefully that shows up well on the video. But that's 350 kilohertz, so that's the 700 kilohertz switching frequency that I've basically like that's always going to be running. The, the card's always going to be running slightly higher. Stock is 600 kilohertz. Um, but 700 kilohertz, it should basically help the card. In theory, it should help the card over, like, overclock a little bit better. I don't think that going from 600 kilohertz to 700 kilohertz would actually make a measurable difference on ambient. Um, maybe some of the higher settings that I have available will, but definitely not this one. 700 kilohertz is definitely not that much. Let's just power down. Because um, I don't actually know if it's okay to try change the switching frequency. Well, it probably isn't um, okay to try change the switching frequency while we're running. So right now we should be at one megahertz switching frequency. Um, so let's power up again. And uh, I'm gonna show. And I mean the mod takes you know works instantly. So right now already, you can see we're at 489 kilohertz. So 10 kilohertz below, you know, 500 megahertz. And obviously this card is running doublers. So those doublers cut that switching frequency in half because they take that PWM signal and they, they trade it between the two phases. So as you can clearly see, so that one megahertz mode works. And now we're going to go into 1.35 megahertz because um, if you remember the video I did about like just talking about modifying this, um, the the double the the power stages themselves are limited to 1.5 megahertz, and uh, I, I figured that probably 1.6 megahertz is probably the limit for what we can push into the doublers proper, which is just kind of like that seems like a good cutoff point because that's a cutoff point for some other doublers. It's probably not like correct and. Uh, Somebody actually left a comment pointing out how you can like read the data, like d read the data sheet and like do some actual work to figure out what the real limit would be. But it's like the the card go the the controller only goes up to 1.7 megahertz anyway. I don't really care about like losing 100 megahertz to being uh, 100 kilohertz to being lazy. So um, that's kind of that. Anyway, let's boot it up at 1.35 megahertz, and we should be seeing 670 something kilohertz on the oscilloscope which we indeed are 672 kilohertz. So yeah, all of the modifications work. Um, we can tweak the switching frequency up and down. I don't know how much it'll actually make, like how much of a difference it'll make in terms of overclocking. Um, I'm gonna also, like I still need to also implement like VDroop settings, but for now this is just kind of what I wanted to show. And now I'll actually show you how that modification looks like close up on, on the on the card proper. So I'll just quickly tear this down and, and point the camera to the uh, system. But as you can see, the modification works just fine. Um, I'm just going to power off, turn off the PSU, and let's get this unplugged. Up, oh. come here. And the HDMI, get the multimeter, blue tack off the thing that I'm using to measure. And I'm just going to quickly give you a transition screen and uh, put the clean, clean up the desk because there's like a whole bunch of cameras actually sitting on it. Move the monitor a bit. 
make way for, for the teardown. So, oh. There. And card is coming right now. And here we go. So that is the current state of the 1080 Ti Game Rock. So um, there's a few. Ch there's actually like one change to the to the capacitor situation here. Uh, this cap right, like I had this uh, type of like uh, aluminum polymer over here as well. Uh, the thing is that that area is right up against the the VRM heatsink on the OC formula. Uh, and, uh, well, basically, uh, the, the multi-layer ceramic that capacitor was attached to really didn't like getting, like, bashed against the heatsink all the time. So that, that basically broke off, and I had to replace it with, uh, with a 47 microfarad cap, because I didn't actually have the, like, I didn't have one in the original size. So that should be fine. That's not a problem. It'll still run. But, uh, I am kind of annoyed that I can't keep that large capacitor in that area. I'll maybe try find a spot on the other side of the PCB so that I don't have that clearance problem. But, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of unfortunate. Anyway, um, so I have voltage measurement just going right off the back of the core. And uh, then we have the actual sort of modifications. And, of course, it's on the Morpheus heatsink because this thing makes modifying the card so much easier because it's just for, well, I've completely swapped out the mounting hardware, so it's not like this is the stock mounting hardware for the heatsink. But with the swapped out mounting hardware, this thing is much, much, much easier to deal with than, like, a stock heatsink. Oh. You just have to be careful to not over-tighten it, which really isn't that big a risk, because basically, once once it's more or less flush against the PCB, it's like that. that's about as much as you want to tighten it down. Anyway, so that's the other side of the card. And uh, basically, all of the modifications are getting implemented on this little uh, board right here. I'm going to just probably going to have to zoom the... Oh, no, it's already at full zoom out. So why is it not... Oh, there we go. <laughs> was wondering why it wasn't focusing. So that's how the modifications are implemented for now. Um, so that's a four-channel dip switch, of course. I've only used up one, two, and three. Um, and the ma order actually matters. So like right now, this is a uh, 1.35 uh, megahertz mode. Let me just switch it. Well, that wouldn't work. But there. So that right there would be 700 kilohertz, and that's one megahertz. Um, Come on. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, that's one megahertz right now. And then uh, if I want to, the, the voltage, low voltage mode basically is uh, switch number one. So, there, that's how I drop the voltage. And uh, honestly, that was actually, like, now that I think about it, that wasn't such a smart idea because there's a good chance that I'll, like, hit one and two at the same time. but. Since I only really have to hit one when the card is like, uh, when the card has crashed and we're, we're like, recent, like the system's powered off, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, but it's kind of less than ideal. Um, but after I add the, so for the voltage, uh, for VDROOP settings, I plan to add another four channel dip switch and a bunch of resistors behind that. And so I'll still use like the, the fourth channel on this, I'll probably use that for like completely remove all VDROOP. And then the other four channels on the next dip switch over will be like various increments of VDROOP reduction. So that's how, that's how I'm kind of planning to build it out. Um, that little board is actually soldered into place uh, very badly because my soldering iron really can't go up against the ground plane on this thing. Screw holes are not normally this, this well connected to the power, like, to the power planes. Like, these sink a lot of heat compared to some other cards I've worked on. Um, and so basically, yeah, the soldering, like, the 60-watt irons that I use just don't have a blood, like, don't have a chance against that. Um, if I use both of them at the same time, then actually, like, they, they power through it, because then it's effectively like having a 120-watt. But the problem with doing that is that, of course, at that point, both of my hands are occupied, and I kind of can't do much, so that's why those look horrendous. Um, 
So for the, the actual wiring, so that resistor over there and this black wire going along here, that is for the, uh, that goes to the, the switching frequency circuitry, which really it's just like, normally that would have just been a resistor to ground and now it's like this wire, which then goes to a resistor, which goes to some more resistors, which are in parallel with the switch and yet more with the switches and yet more resistors. So it's, I mean, it's really just a bunch of resistors in parallel and, and some in series to get the correct values. But uh, it, it's not that complicated, really. It looks complicated, but it really, really isn't. It's it's very, very basic um, electronics. Of course, there's the there's the power mod, of course, right there on the right by the eight pins. Um, so the card doesn't even know how much power it's pulling properly, which is nice because um, it can't power throttle if it doesn't know how much power it's pulling. Um, and there's the actual back of that board. And to be completely honest, I did attach this before I actually added any componentry to it, which uh, that's definitely like making your life more, that's definitely just like bad planning on my part. Um, and I don't actually plan to change that if I do this again, because I do like how this, this is working out in terms of like uh, being able to attach like all of these through hole resistors without just having them flopping about the PCB, which is just like, then you need to like glue them or something to the PCB. And I don't really like doing that just because it, like, I just don't like doing that. I don't know why. <laughs> it just doesn't, just, just gluing things to the PCB is not something I particularly like doing. Because um, then you want, might want to, like, remove the thing, and the glue doesn't let go, and you break the PCB trying to pull it off. Or the glue is really, really weak, and it just comes off at random all the bloody time. So, like this, um, well, it's not coming off, that's for sure, but... At least, like, it, I, I don't know. I, I, just, I just feel more okay with this setup than in the alternative. And admittedly, it's a, it's a nice way to hold, like, the dip switches and everything. Um, I, I'm not saying this is better than hot glue, but I just prefer it to hot glue. I, I don't know why. I don't have a rational reason. Like, I don't have a logical reason for why this would be better than just hot gluing everything on. But uh, I just prefer it. So... Uh, that black wire is for the switching frequency stuff, and if we go up close, this camera is actually good enough to focus on this. Come on, camera, I believe in you. Uh, would help if, you know, I wasn't shaking the board, but you can see right there. And originally where that wire connects, there was a res one re little SMD resistor. I had to desolder that, and then I could solder that wire in. And then all of the, the switching frequency settings are on this board now. That's how that's set up. The white wire is the, the white wire goes to the reference input. That was just my uh, multimeter beeping because it's turning off. But the white wire goes to the reference input of the NCP81274. So basically whatever voltage is on that white wire is what the v VRM is going to be outputting. And the red wire goes to the two volts reference voltage output of the NCP81274. So there's two volts on that. Um, that obviously goes into the potentiometer over here. Um, come on, focus. Done it before, you can do it again. I believe in you, camera. The lighting here really isn't ideal. I'll call that good enough. There. Um, so, yeah, and the potentiometer is, like, limited to not, like... Because, you know, if you shorted it to 2 volts, you'd get 2 volts on the output that kills the GPU. Uh, if you didn't limit the lower side, you could set it all the way to like zero, like you could set it to like zero volts at boot up and then it wouldn't boot and then you'd have to like slowly work the voltage up and it would just be a bloody pain. Uh, so I didn't want to deal with that either. So there's a resistor from the potentiometer going to ground to prevent us from setting the vo voltage too low. And there's a potentiometer limiting the voltage to the two volts uh, reference pin to prevent us from setting the voltage too high. Um, very, like, I, I do this for all my cards and, like, the values always change depending on what exactly I need. But this, this is just something I do because I, I like to not accidentally blow stuff up. Um, so, yes, and there's this long component lead, which I forgot to cut off because I got so excited that everything was working that I just couldn't stop myself from plugging the thing in and checking that it is actually working and the, I've since still not trimmed off that component lead. But that is actually pretty much it, I think, as far as the modifications go. Um, honestly, I think the, the switching frequency stuff I've done might have been a bit excessive. Um, 
Because honestly, you probably could get away with just a switch that puts you into 1.35 megahertz and, and screw it. Or if you were, you know, if you were badass, you could just have it permanently locked at 1.35 megahertz uh, and just go screw it even more so. But uh, I don't know. I, I just like having the option to actually switch the VRM between different switching frequencies. Um, which is like, I mean, the, the only downside to the higher switching frequencies is that the VRM efficiency goes to hell. Um, because you just burn tons and tons of power just switching the, the MOSFETs on and off. Um, for no, like, and and the, there are benefits to it. You, like, you get less ripple, and you get better transient response, so it does lead to potential, it can lead to better overclocking, it's just like, yeah, um, well, the, basically, if I find out that this, uh, the, the extra switching frequency doesn't do anything, then I don't have to use it, at least. But um, I think that's actually it, because there's really not that much to it. Oh, yeah, and there was a resistor I had to desolder from the, uh, the, you know, the reference input circuitry for the, uh, for the Vault mod, for the V-Core. And, yeah, so that's, that's the current state of the card. Um, the, the lovely 12 phase is now getting overclocked. Here at Actually Hardcore Overclocking, we don't just overclock the GPU core and the GPU memory. No, we overclock the VRM. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, hopefully, like, I, I'm really hoping that after all this effort I'm going to, it'll do 2500 megahertz, at least 2500. Um, and then, of course, like, I, I'm super excited for the droop settings. Like, I really, really want, want, wonder what will happen if I have proper V-droop control, because I will have the option to have, like, five different V-droop settings. So we can go from, like, very, very, like, lots and lots of V-droop to very little to no V-droop at all. Um, and that'll be interesting. In theory, like, in theory, always having some amount of V-droop should help, um, because the problem is a VRM cannot change voltage, like, ch cannot change current output instantly. Or at least not, like, it can't do it instantly. So you get a, ba basically, when you go from, like, idle to full load, or just as the load goes up and down, uh, you get irregularities in the voltage output just based on the, the, the current pull. And so in theory, so basically the idea with having, like, it, let's say this 12-phase VRM is really, really good, and so we just need, like, a very small amount of V-droop, like, say, I don't know, 10 millivolts per 100 amps or something. Well, that's still 10 millivolts less heat that I need to deal with on liquid nitrogen, and that could easily translate to a few extra, few extra megahertz worth of core clock. Though on the flip side, I also, uh, also like from talking to uh, Kinkpin about overclocking 1080 Ti's, he basically said like, there's no point to run any V-droop on these because the problem is that once you come out of load, uh, if your voltage goes too high, the driver crashes. But I didn't really run into that with my other 1080 Ti, and that one really, like, the main problem was just it was running too damn hot once I went past sort of 1.5 volts. And in theory, um, well, 1.55 volts, which is where it tops out, basically because I can't get it colder. Um, if it stayed colder and I ran more voltage, it should clock higher. So in theory, having a little bit of e-droop should allow me to push the voltage a little bit higher and then not actually have that much voltage under load. Um, because ultimately, like, the card's going to crash when the voltage dips down anyway, right? So when you go into, like, that really heavy part of 3D Mark Firestrike, where it just goes from, you know, like, 3D Mark Firestrike GT1 has this part where the power consumption jumps up, like, massively. Um, and it's, like, really, really common that if you're going to crash somewhere, it's going to be right there. And, uh, well, with a little bit of e-droop, that part could run a little bit cooler instead of just getting really, really hot because there's no V-droop, the voltage still dips, right? Because you're, like, if you're running fire strike, so let's say you're doing, like, 100 amps the whole time, and then this part just jumps up to 125 amps, and when it does that jump, which it wouldn't be that, that base, like, simple, it would, like, the, the current draw of a GPU core is nowhere near constant. Um, but, you know, you get this big spike in current pull, which, is, which translates to this big dip in voltage, and then the voltage comes back way back up, and it's just really, really hot the whole time. So instead, instead of having having that, instead of just having this dip in in the sort of straight line that the voltage is trying to be, instead of just having this dip, it'll kind of just gently come down a bit, stay low, and then come back up, um, which should in theory be a bit better um, because it'll run less hot. Uh, 
while still like, because wh when the voltage dips, you're going to crash, right? That, that's the part where you're going to crash. Um, so with the voltage, like the vo voltage is still going to dip, but now it's going to be running cooler because after the dip, um, it's going to stay low instead of climbing back up to voltage levels that are quite frankly useless. So yeah, maybe having uh, the V-droop controls, I'm, I'm really excited to have those on this card. Um, sucks that I couldn't get those onto the Founders Edition. And also one thing worth noting about like, if you want to implement like a, a board like this for your own volt mods, I would really recommend that you put it at a 45 degree angle, right? Especially if you jam it up against like large capacitors in the eight pins right here. Cause uh, basically I can't, like getting in there with a soldering iron is a massive pain to do any of the soldering. So th that's one of those things that I really regret. But since this is like soldered into place, this is not going anywhere and I can't really tweak it at this point. So I'm just gonna deal with it. But in the future, I'm gonna have it tweaked over, like, you know, at an angle of like 45 degrees or something so that it's much more accessible. Also, I'm not gonna have the potentiometer perm like hard atta like attached directly to the board. I'm probably gonna give it a little bit of wire so it just hangs off or something. Cause quite frankly, getting at it is, is a pain. But yeah, um, that is the current condition of the 1080 Ti game rock. At this point, I am 110% certain that I'm never getting the stock cooler to fit on this again. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It basically means I don't have to clean that disgusting piece of filth. But, uh, cause that's still full of like dead insects. But, uh, yeah, um, that's kind of, kind of my, my plans on, for, for the card. Um, it's gonna, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm really excited and I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far. This is just so much better than the, I mean, other than this mishap right here, but compared to the other 1080 Ti, this, this is so much better in its execution, I feel like. Um, so much cleaner, so much nicer. The, the power mod doesn't, you know, look like an octopus going over to the INA3221. It's this nice little contained thing. Um, which honestly, like as I keep adding mods, this place is just going to become a mess of wires anyway, but at least there will be, uh, it'll be necessary wires instead of wires that exist just because I couldn't be bothered to find a better way. So anyway, that is finally it for the video. I must have said so anyway, that so many times at this point, somebody's going to complain. Uh, but yeah, that is it for, for this video and I've made it unnecessarily long again, but, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I, I guess probably, well, if you did like the video, you can like it. Um, like, share, sub uh, sh share, subscribe, and uh, what else was there? All right, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, so modifications like this um, and all the other stuff I do here on the channel, I have a Patreon, I have t-shirts. You can find a link to those down in the description below. Those help out immensely. And uh, yeah, that is it. Oh, and uh, thank you to, well, honestly, like this entire video is kind of funded by the patrons because I bought the OC formula, guess with what, what budget, and the scope, and the, and the GPU here. The, the only things I didn't pay for in this setup are like the EVGA cooler and the EVGA PSU. So thanks to Asatec for the cooler and EVGA for the power supply. So that's the 1600 watt titanium one, um, which I didn't really feature, but that's actually what's been powering the system the whole time. So anyway, that is it, and uh, goodbye.